Irish guy and I woke up this morning minding my own business. Sure, I mean, I was ready to drink a cereal bowl filled with toilet water and then I see this story. Josie Mourinho to West Ham. This was like reading that my mum had agreed to go on a date with Louis Walsh. Um, panic stations, please. Honestly, it almost made me spit last night's tea out my nose. And before I get into this, okay, I know. I know. Oh, the Irish guy is obsessed. I know. You probably all think that I'm some cave-dwelling zombie who'd gladly pay to buy Mourinho's fingernails off the web. You probably all think that I spend my days licking the doormat of his London family home. You probably all think that I go around posh London breakfast joints begging the manager to let me lick the spoon that Mourinho used for his porridge 17 years ago, right? That I'm an obsessed lunatic. That I write midnight love letters to Jose with Dido singing in the corner, right? That I probably already dug up his dog's grave just to sniff his fur. I get it, okay, but I'm sorry, okay? You want to hear the latest Mourinho update? Sorry, Brandon A. Young, but you can take the day off, pal. I've got this one covered. I'll take it from here. Instead, I just want you to comment down below about your favorite Susan Boyle song and why. I'll do the Jose stuff, okay? Listen, I see this preposterous media link and I think, oh, West Ham fans must be dancing around their bedroom. No, 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 what really made me upset is their reaction on the internet. You swear this was two Susan Boyle's one cup. Be prepared, okay? This ungrateful reaction. It's gonna be like seeing Oliver Twist turn his nose up at a three-course buffet. West Ham are 16th in the league. Trying to wade their way through a David Moyes midlife crisis. They're the equivalent of Oh, please sir, can I have some more? And yet this is their reaction to Jose. Please no, would be even worse than what we have to watch now. Prefer Michael Carrick personally and I'm sure there must be someone who could put a hammer's badge on that tracksuit he's wearing. He wouldn't be my first choice certainly, but if the alternative is Benitez, What's wrong with Rafa? Are we serious here? Mourinho and Benitez have both managed Chelsea, Inter Milan and Real Madrid. They've won three Champions Leagues between them using subhuman sludge buckets like Jimmy Traore, Nuno Valente, Harry Kuhl and Sully Montari. And anyone know the last West Ham manager to win the Champions League? This is only a few years after you had Big Sam at the wheel. Someone who, yeah, knows a lot about relegation battles and fitting six cheeseburgers in his mouth at once, but he knows about as much about Champions League football as I do out of French kiss a pig turning your nose of a monster European giants like Mourinho and Benitez just what? These two were facing off in intense Champions League semi-finals back around the same time that the Hammers were losing at Reading by six goals to nil. Yeah, I mean, West Ham fans probably thought that everyone's forgotten about that game. And then like that kid in school who hopes that nobody will remember when he accidentally weed himself at the back of geography class. But I remember. Kevin Doyle ain't Rio's brother with a spoon. Jose would be better than noise, but he wouldn't be my preferred option. Pochettino or Potter? Pochettino or Potter. Only four managers in the history of the sport have won more trophies than Mourinho's 26. Of those four managers, only two are still managing. Pep Guardiola at Man City and... Weirdly, the bloke who coaches Dynamo Kiev. And let's be honest, Guardiola began his career with a silver spoon in his mouth. I mean, his first job was coaching Messi and a bunch of Spanish players who just won Euro 2008. Mourinho, by contrast, was Benfica and Unai de Lira. The second one just sounds like a brand of airport urinal. But yeah, I mean, sure, why would you want a serial trophy magnet at West Ham? Well, yeah, you can just pick the P.O. boys, the men with an allergy to silverware. You wouldn't be able to fit all of Jose's medals in a fridge. But um, Potter and Pochettino, Graham and Maurice, um, it's two lower league Swedish medals, one Swedish cup, a couple of French cups, and a league on medal. You could safely squeeze all of those into a purse and still make room for a ham and cheese toasty. I, I mean, I can't believe what I'm reading. Since when did a bearded hipster with a degree in emotional intelligence become more of an appetizing choice than Mourinho? Potter has begun his Chelsea tenure with 11 wins in his first 28 games. Jose's first 28 games as Chelsea boss, 21 wins against the likes of Manchester United, Liverpool, PSG, and Porto. What? They were the European champions because of Jose. I mean, Potter's Chelsea has spent £600 million this season. Back in the summer of 2004, Jose spent £91 million, less than the price of an Enzo. Our fans would hate him, boring football. I'm sorry, but uh, when have West Ham ever been easy on the eye? Can we please just knock this one on the head? I've heard West Ham fans bleed on about the West Ham way. Well, what? 
is it? Because the coaches that have tried to come in and play expansive, stylish football were quickly tossed into a recycling bin. Like said Gianfranco Zola and Stefan Bilic. Two guys who just grew up to get eaten alive by the Watford owners. Honestly, lads, I'm disappointed with Chris Wilder. Agreeing to go and work for the Pozzos. It's been like agreeing to go for a pizza with the Corleone family. Yeah, you'll probably be strangled into a few of pepperoni. David Moyes has largely been a mammoth. West Ham success. And yet he's just some rigid dinosaur who peaked in 2005. Honestly, West Ham fans thinking they're entitled to stylish, expansive football. It's been like Danny DeVito saying he'll only date supermodels. Sorry, Danny, but I'm pretty sure Miss California would probably look at you and puke into her wine. That if you add all of West Ham's previous managers together in the Premier League era, then um, they won one Premier League title between them. Jose has won three. To me, this is like running into some fat bloke down the pub. You know, the type who lives with his mum, constantly has armpit sweat patches, and smells a bit like a box of dead mice. It's like him turning his nose up at a date with Reese with her spoon. Just kissing on that dead nan in your freezer. Stop being picky. I'm sorry, West Ham are a club who once appointed Avram Grant. You don't get to be choosing now. You gave a full four year deal. There's something that looks like he's pulled off the set of Star Wars. Lads, since the 90s, here was every West Ham manager's immediate next club after they left Upton Park. Portsmouth, Newcastle, Charlton Athletic, Italy under 16s, Portsmouth again, Sunderland, Ali he had, and finally Real Betis. I mean, come on! He's too toxic! I wouldn't want him anywhere near the club! Downgrade on Moyes! Downgrade on Moyes! When Moyes took the Manchester United job, it weighed him down! As if he'd just gone for a swim in a lake with a school bag full of bowling balls! He took them from 1st to 7th! When Josie arrived, he took them from 6th to 2nd! Well, I mean, I mean, sort of. I mean, he was the one to finish 6th, but still! Does anyone reckon that Moyes would've turned it around? And finished second to Chelsea in his second season? No, because I think he had about as much respect in that dressing room as Piers Morgan would having lunch with the king. Moyes should be lucky he wasn't around long enough to lose that title race to Leicester City. I mean, as Manchester United boss, there's no coming back from that. Is it a coincidence that the football club hasn't hired Louis van Gaal since? West Ham are worried about boring football, but do you not remember after a nil-nil draw at Chelsea in 2014, Mourinho actually called out Big Sam for using 19th century football. I mean, lads, that's Season. Jose was winning game 6-3, 4-2, 5-0, there was a chaotic 5-3 defeat at Tottenham. I mean, in his three seasons as Real Madrid boss, the team scored 462 goals. They scored 121 goals in a single league season. They comfortably outscored Pep's perfect Barcelona. And you think that's boring? Moyes has been a stopgap. In between upgrading from Manuel Pellegrini to Jose Mourinho at West Ham. Yeah, that was a move being made by Florentino Perez in 2010. If it's a good enough upgrade for the biggest club in world sport, then it's good enough for a club. We've got Mark Noble in their Hall of Fame. West Ham do not want this. Don't want him at all, but if he comes to us, I'll support him. Same as other dice. Same as other dice. Really? We're just lumping those two into the same sentence now? Do you not know how nutty this sounds? From Tottenham to Roma to West Ham. This is a career trajectory that looks like it would belong to, I don't know, Scott Parker. You know, the guy with a nice haircut about to get a sack in Belgium. But Mourinho, this man has always prided himself going to huge jobs where he's replacing an already dignified, experienced, top class coach respected on the European scene. He was deemed to be a direct, immediate upgrade on managers like Vanieri, Mancini, Pellegrini, Benitez, Van Hal. But now, being asked to clean up the mess left by David Moyes again? I mean, I know he didn't directly replace him at Old Trafford, but I don't know. Mourinho joined arguably the biggest club in the world and is greeted by the side of Maron Fellaini. That's like getting into a new relationship and finding out that her ex-husband left you a poo in the sink. West Ham fans want Michael Carrick in charge. The man he used to make Mourinho is coffee. It's funny. Chelsea did that once, in hiring an up-and-coming Ander Villas Boas. Soon found out that his talent didn't match his arrogance. He was a bit like if you gave the Conor McGregor swagger to, I don't know, Deji. Oh, oh, yeah, Carrick has taken Middlesbrough from the relegation zone to almost second in the championship. In his first job, too! Yeah, great. Roy Keane sort of did that. Too. Except he picked Sunderland off the foot of the championship and quickly won the league. Yeah, then he fails at Ipswich and now can't even pass a job interview in League One. And considering Carrick was literally bought to replace Keane at Man United, there is a huge Venn diagram link between these two men's careers. And so yeah, honestly, 
I'd be more inclined to think that Carrick is gonna flop. I mean, plus, did West Ham really want to hire a man who outgrew your club when he was 23 and chose to move to Spurs? And you want this inexperienced rookie over Josie Mourinho? What is the world coming to? Mourinho might as well go the whole hog and employ Decanio as manager. And now Mourinho is gonna compare to former bosses of Swindon Town. I don't get this. I don't get why. Why is football being so obtuse? Just choosing to stick their head in the sand and pretend that this man is football's answer to wet mud. I mean, you know he just won a trophy at Roma last year. Their first trophy in nearly 15 years? That's right now, Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola are the two super force managers in the Premier League. They're also the only coaches to have won the Champions League. I mean, I think it was really weird to see Carlo Ancelotti, who was one of the few European champions while in Everton. But I mean, Real Madrid soon fixed that glitch in the Matrix, and now they've instead got the former Burnley boss. Which is a bit like receiving keys to a Lamborghini for Christmas. All did you realize that Santa Claus has made a mistake? And actually, no. We'll take the keys back, and instead, here's a stocking filled with mashed up dog food. So make the mistake, if Mourinho joins West Ham, he will be one of three Champions League winning bosses in this division. And yet the Hammers want to say no? There is potential in this West Ham squad. Christ, well, they got Lucas Paqueta in the field. This isn't like struggling West Ham teams from the past, where the manager is sweating over the ankles of Andy Carroll. Honestly, Mourinho, at the end of the season, he would come in and drag West Ham back into the top ten. Here's the problem, though. This move is beneath him. Lads, it's only last year the man was turning down a move to PSG. Something Pochettino should have probably have done too. Because honestly, if Pochettino had not soiled his reputation by finishing second behind Lille, then right now, he'd probably be Manchester United boss. But Mourinho was clever. He spat in the face of the poison chalice and chose to grind out success at Roma. But going to the Hammers at 60 years of age, it's an insult to the man. Am I going to be sick of these world-class managers being so disrespected like this? There is no way that Ancelotti should have ever been offered the Everton job. A few years ago, the great Arsene Wenger was being offered a contract by Fulham. When he said no, they gave the job to Claudio Ranieri instead. Like Wenger versus Ranieri was a famous Champions League clash and title race back in 2004. And here they're being asked to save Fulham. We just saw the great Marcelo Bielsa be sacked by Leeds. Like Marcello Lippi won a World Cup with Italy. And the next year, he's been asked to manage Birmingham. And I'm pretty sure if Sir Alex Ferguson hadn't had his health problems, you just know. In the last five years, he'd have probably been disrespectfully offered the job at Watford. The football is ageist. Once a manager goes past the age of 60. Everyone assumes they're past the dinosaurs. Honestly, Klopp is only four years of his 60th birthday. Have fun, Jurgen, because come 2027, you're probably going to be offered disrespectful jobs at Fenerbahce, Nice, or West Brom. Football is incredibly ageist. It's been like Leonardo DiCaprio setting his Tinder age radius below 23, despite him being nearly halfway to 100 himself. I'm sorry, lad, but the whole Jose to West Ham link and the reaction to it just sends an angry shiver up my spine. Anyway, that's for one thing. Let me know what you think. All right, let me know about the whole Mourinho link. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to get like, subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.